You have just tuned in to On Top and Hot. I'm the host, John Zadar, and this is June 13th. It is Monday. What I like to do on this show is talk about OTC and penny stocks. I like to bring to your attention stocks that are catching attention from other investors or something I think you should at least be considering. Now today what I want to do is focus in just on OTC market stocks. We're not going to look at any NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange penny stocks. I want to take the temperature of the OTC market. It hasn't been feeling very well lately. Maybe it's feeling a bit unloved. So let's go see what was running today, volume, trades, and gains. So what do you think of the place? I rearranged a little bit. You like it? No, I'm not going to keep it this way. We're just going to do this for today. I've got a split screen to make it easy for both of us. You've got the information to see the chart and my otcmarkets.com website. Though I got to be honest, I'm going to miss the transitions. It gives me a chance to take a break and do whatever it is I got to do. All right, so we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website to do our research on OTC stocks. The main reason I like this site, it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. That means you're getting current information on the stuff you're normally looking for all the time. Why go doing searches when you know where it's at? Now, while we're here, let's take a look at how the OTC market finished today. Oh man, woohoo, it finished good. I mean, I'm not saying it was a great day, but it's an improved day, a huge improvement. We have $2.3 billion that we generated today. Now that's not a big, big, big number, but we normally do 2.1 and rarely ever move off of it. And last week we moved off of it, down. We went down to like 1.4, 1.5 billion dollars. And I mean for the whole last year, we rarely ever move off that no matter how many trades or how many shares the OTC does. The money seems to always be the same. It's up today. Another thing up is 8.8 .8 billion shares. Folks, last week we were under 5 billion. A year ago, we were over 55 billion in one day. That's how far it has fallen. And rarely ever does it climb back up. And if it does, it's just a smidge. This is virtually double what we had Thursday last week. So this is an impressive jump. I don't know what's got her excited, but I hope it continues. And even the trades have gone up. We were at 272,000 last week. And again, this number hasn't been going up and coming down, going up. It's just been falling, falling, falling. And we are getting close to a half a billion trades. Hopefully, the heat continues to get hot. Now, the reason I'm over here right now, though, is to find those runners, find the stocks that had interest from investors. And we can find that over here at the current markets right there. Click that. This is going to bring you to one of my favorite pages, or at least a doorway to one of my favorite pages. This is a list of all the most active stocks on the entire OTC market. So you are looking basically at 12,000 stocks that have been filtered in and all we have to do is drill down in to get the information we're looking for. Now we're looking for advancers, not decliners, so we're going to focus in there. Now we don't want to just see stocks over a dollar or stocks just over a nickel, but you could if that's what you want. We're going to look at all of them. Then we're going to click this more and dedicate the page just to our advancers. And I'm going to go ahead and kick this out a few more times. Now this has got the sort of information you're used to seeing everywhere. You've got your ticker, your price, percentage change, and this is in order of percentage gains, largest at the top. So this FONU was the biggest gain out of all 12,000 plus stocks on the OTC market. We've got how much money they generated today. You normally can't find that information. How many shares they sold. And then my favorite piece of information, trades. I love this number. So this company did 14 trades today. I use that trade number as an indicator for how many people are around this stock. Now I'm not saying that is 14 people, but I know it's probably not one. It's not one person doing 14 trades. I mean, there could be seven people there doing two trades, but it's more than one, 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 one. And that's what I'm looking for. Stocks that have big numbers. And that's not a big number. A big number to me, well, Let's start off with the lowest big number, 50. Yeah, that's my that's like my low, but I've had to compromise and bring it down to 30 here recently. But I am used to seeing stocks with hundreds of trades, even thousands of trades. And how many people do you think are around a stock that has 1,200 trades? A few hundred? And how much price action do you think you'll get out of that? 
a lot of motion in the ocean. You know, the pool is splashing when you got a lot of people in it. So that's what I'm looking for, splash factor. Now, we do have a lot of big gains here, but none of these we could take advantage of. These black diamonds are expert market. These are normally companies that have been late filing and were late for too long, and they got yanked off the open market. Now, they're not delisted, it's just a timeout, and they'll come back onto the open market once they get their filings caught up. However, that doesn't mean that they're gonna come back. A lot of companies just were abandoned. Management left the company, there's no business, there's no revenues, there's nobody. It's just a boat floating on the water with nobody in it. And a lot of those companies end up over here. And since there's nobody in the company anymore, nobody's gonna file and get that company back out. Now the reason I mention this is when you start to see people trading it, that normally means somebody is still in the company and there is a chance at some point in time that it could come back on the market. So if you see one stock getting a lot of action and it's a black diamond, this could come onto the market soon. And I got to tell you folks, these things rip. I mean, they rip. We found one back in October last year. I looked at it. I said, this looks prime. There's been a lot of activity on it. It's jumping around. I think this is going to come back on the market. And the chart looks like it should get 17,000% gains. I know. Who says that, right? The next day, it did. It got released off of the expert market, came on the open market, and went 89,000%. I got a video out there for it, folks. Both videos, the one before and the one after. So, yeah, it can happen. So, just so you can see here, I'm going to just click into one. Uh, let's do it this way. And I want to show you where I get information. Now, this one, that's skull and crossbones. That's caveat emptor. That's bad, bad, bad. That's a warning. They're telling you, stay away from this one. It's poison. They don't tell you why it's bad. They just tell you it's bad. And they won't give you any information. So I probably won't get anything from this one. Let me see if I can find one that's not poison. I see anything here I recognize. How about Norwegian? Let's try Norwegian and see if I can get a safe ticker. Nope, this one's bad too. All right, what I was going to show you is over here on overview, it's not here. Doggone it. I'm going to have to show you on a regular stock that isn't bad. Let's look at phone new because it will be there. They all have this if they're not skull and crossbone. All right, right down here, trade data. Okay, this is showing you what has just happened, the most recent trades it has. And if the most recent trades were two weeks ago, that's what it's going to show you. But this is where you can see the price. And you will see a price of 501. And it'll jump up to triple zero one and maybe go to five cents and then fall back to triple zero one. Most of these expert market stocks come back onto the market at triple zero one. That is the floor and it just got back into the game so it's not going to fall. So what normally happens is the stock jumps to its regular price before it got yanked off the market because that's what its value was. And if its value was two cents, it goes from triple zero one up to two cents, which is a 200,000% gain. Boom! So. This is why I like expert markets. However, they are hit and miss because you never know when one is going to come off the market. So I'm just going to scroll down here and we are going to look for stocks that have, yes, like that. Hoo hoo hoo, look at that. 2,325 trades. How many people do you think were around this stock today? It wasn't just 10 people. I guarantee you that. There was a lot of people. Wow. Look at the trades or the volume. They have 632 million shares today. Over a half a billion shares. Outstanding. And when you consider that there was 8.8 .8 billion today, that's like a, what? One sixteenth of all the shares on the market. So they got 1 16th of every share that was bought on the OTC market today. It went to this company, TXTM, which was up 125% at the end of the day. I did see this on the charts earlier because I'm always holding a scan to see what's getting great gains. And this was ripping. I think this was up to 300% first thing this morning. And they generated over $2 million in sales today. We're going to go take a look at this one right now. I wonder what the reason is it ran. It's got to have a reason when you get that much attention. So, let's see here. They finished at 00405. You know, this is something I've learned. When you see that many digits, 
way out there, that five right there is not because of me or you. You try to put in a bid with a five right there and it'll tell you, you have to go up one digit. You have to get a full digit here. It won't let you do a half. So who does do that? Marketers and brokers. They do it. And I got to tell you, when they buy this stuff, they normally buy it when it's really cheap. They do. They seem to know things. I don't know. So we've got a double zero four zero five with 125% gains. Pink current, verified profile, though I don't see a transfer agent here, and that's important. You can have a lot of stocks get locked up because they weren't transferred where they needed to go on time. They have to move on time. So I would like to see a transfer agent here sooner rather than later. So what do they tell us this company is? Protext Pharma operates two wholly owned subsidiaries, Plandi Biotechnology in South Africa and Cannabis Biosciences. Uh, okay, so they're into cannabis in South Africa. Now, you don't hear a lot about South Africa, but I got to tell you, folks, this is a country that's huge. And if you can get doors opened up there for you, that is a virgin market. It's virgin territory and it's growing in an equatorial area of the earth where, where the sun would really be something else. So let's see what we can find here. We know what the volume was. She normally does 44 million shares a day. Not bad, but today she did 632 million. Much better. Share structure. God, let's hope for a low float. Well, I don't know what it is. I will go look this up for you folks. Um, 7.8 billion is what they have outstanding. Oh my God. If I can find it, I'll put it up there for you. Uh, that's a heck of a lot. I'm going to expect a huge float. But look, it didn't bother the gains, did it? So, you know, don't worry about the float if you're playing a day trade, if you're playing a swing trade. It's for long holds you got to worry about the float. Although, a small float can definitely help your day trade or your swing trade hugely. Financials, they making any money? No. I would have thought they were. Not a bloody penny. So we don't have shell risk or shell company over here, but they haven't reported a single penny. Let's see if we got any disclosures over here. Last month, uh, these are their financials. And no, we got nothing new here. So all we have is the news. So there's got to be something here. And there is. Yes, today, Republic of South Africa Medical Marijuana Dispensaries Acquisitions, LLC, also known as R. Samata, completes acquisition of Protex Mobility. Protex Mobility has been acquired? Whoa, let's jump into this, folks. This is, uh, you know, it's not this company acquiring the South African company. It's the South African company acquiring this company. This is a unique situation. So what do we got here? Republic of South Africa Medical Marijuana Dispensary Acquisitions is pleased to announce it is closed on the acquisition of Protex Mobility. That is correct, then. In a share exchange whereby 100% of the stock of R. Samata will be exchanged for preferred stock in a jointly owned company. Jointly owned. Okay, so it's not a takeover. It's a, it's a joint venture, if you will, but they're coming together as one. Um, in a jointly owned company focused on acquisitions with two principal owners, these two people, who represent the South African business entities of R. Samd and is a South African pioneer in the research cultivation, production, and distribution of medical cannabis and cannabinoids. The company owns a 5,000 hectare, is that how you say it, <laughs> Newcastle Farm, as well as a federally issued cannabis and hemp license issued by the government of South Africa. So they've got their licenses in South Africa. They've got a 5,000 hectare, I don't know how to say that, farm. Uh, Arsamad management have taken over the daily operations of Protex and uh, that's about it. For the past couple of years, we've been focused on building our operations in South Africa and globally, where we have built an extensive infrastructure and global cannabis hemp business. During this period of time, we have invested heavily in building a significant cannabis hemp operation to facilitate complete seed to sale, research and development, global offtake agreements for end product, as well as the extraction infrastructure needed to create what we believe to be some of the highest quality hemp and cannabis on the planet. In South Africa right now, we have just completed our semi-annual grow. 
Arsmad, in joint venture with Leeds Bordery, cultivated hemp and cannabis crops this past season on a combined 1,000 plus hectares. All of this is done under federally issued permits and licenses to grow, import and export hemp and cannabis, as well as research permits for conducting testing of final products for human consumption and medicinal benefits. Wow, folks, that's the full boat. This, uh, South African medicinal marijuana company, Arsmad. <laughs> um, this South African company is a vertical company. They cover everything from the ground to the cash register. Everything is there. And they have just gotten a hold of this company. And it sounds like they're ready to do some serious business. Now, I don't know a whole lot about this company, but this is why it took off. This is a joint venture. And the bigger company has a lot more to offer that's coming into this right now. So let's jump on over and look at that chart I got my ticker and I got my chart let's see here woohoo look at that bounce all right let's start where we normally start with the big picture right so there is our six month four hour view wow so that's where her high is today that's where she hit her high. I did look at this earlier. So she has been roaming around the 200. I mean, she's really covered some distance, but she is just hovering around that 200 with average volume for the last few months. Nothing incredible going on. Had a couple of big jumps here. We're talking about jumps from a penny and a half. Well, no, double zero one to double zero two three. That's a 30% gain. But today, today she had a huge giant jump and all of the technicals are screaming on the four hour on the 20 day one hour where did you hide there you is so she had a bounce here came back down to her 200 just hanging on that 200 until that news today woohoo she was off and running and she hit that in one hour she hit her high of double zero four nine started the day started at double zero one nine so she went up uh, from 19 to 49 so you had a 30 point increase if you will which is about uh, 80 percent no it's more than that let, let me come in on that five day i know it's more than that so right now we have ourselves a 125 percent gain her price is what four yeah let's just call it double zero four four and she was up to four nine which was another 25 percent or 25 percent of that so yeah she was up high today maybe about 200 percent and she's holding a lot of her gains folks she hasn't dropped hardly anything and let's go into the middle it's going to be somewhere around there so she is far above her 50 percent gain she is pushing at the end of the day up above her 50 uh, MACD has got a positive crossover above the signal line. RSI is in the high uh, 60s and our CCI is above the third line and looking like it wants to give more. Folks, I think this is going to continue running. Now, it's worth doing more DD, obviously, because we don't know a lot about this company. But South Africa is huge. It's virgin territory. This is where the company's coming from. They've got permission in their own country to do everything they want, including research. Folks, you can't get a license to do research in America. You got to go through the DEA, and boy, that is tough. I mean, that's like trying to get a break on your tax bill from the IRS. It just isn't happening. And they have... Uh, the infrastructure set up to do extractions and processing. So I think there's more to probably be gained from this company. I would keep my eye on TXTM. I think they're going to do more. All right, back to our list. Where is that list? Right well, here we go. Now we got a 43 here. I don't want to overlook 43. I mean, compared to 2,300, yeah, it's pretty wimpy. But I have been through this list today, and that is a high number. This is outstanding. I don't think we'll see anything come close to this today. This was the king of trades. I doubt any other. Well, as I said, this is the list right here. Uh, you can go back to the current market and click trades, and it will actually show you the stock that got the most trades. And I'll bet you it was this one. So while we're here, let's look at this. 43 trades with almost 18 million shares, 133% gains. Just came out of the triple zeros. Okay, L-E-A-S. This is lease. Lease, get out of there. All right, strategic asset leasing. Let's see what she does. A new medical ink. 
is a new name for the company on a reverse merger. Oh, I wonder how soon this happened. I wonder if, so we're going to find out here. So she finished a day at 0014, 133% gains. Pink Limited, she's late on her filings. Since we're talking about it, I want to look right now to see what she's late on. We have her quarterly here for September of last year. Uh, we have the annual report for last year. Uh, we probably, I don't know, there probably should be a quarterly for December, a quarterly for March, and now a quarterly for June. So they are three behind as far as I can see. Maybe just two, but I think they're three behind. That's getting a ways behind. This is going to get close to getting a, um, what, what do they call this, a grace period. You see Shell Company here in yellow? You will see grace period down here when this gets close to being yanked off the market because that's what happens if you're not filing on time they will get yanked off the market over to the expert but you'll get a warning it'll say grace period and you'll have 15 days and they do give you the date over here on one of these three links you scroll down to the bottom it'll tell you end date for the grace period so she did have some great gains today what is her normal volume 3.2 million today she did 17 million Security, we're talking about her share structure. Oh, God, virtually all of it. She's got 1 billion shares in there, and well, there's 1 billion in the float. So, virtually all of the outstanding is over there in the float. Financials, psh, another company that's got nothing, no money coming in whatsoever. And we didn't check down here for any new disclosures. They did have one um, 10 days ago, it was an 8K. 8Ks are like. Uh, jewel boxes you never know what's inside them until you open so let's see what this says uh, on February William resigned as officer Dennis Bobat was appointed as director Den Bobat resigned as officer Jason Tucker was appointed as director and CEO so they got a new CEO just a week ago what else can we find out over here anything in the news what was its catalyst that's uh that's a while back that's a while back too so that that 8k was from a week ago I can't imagine that is why it's running today so I wasn't planning on doing this but this is what I would do under most circumstances I'm gonna go over to Twitter and we'll see if we can find any information over here throw in my dollar sign and see what we got Okay, lease up 133. Yeah, tell us something we don't know. What's this? Ticker change in the near future. Right, because they've changed their name. They're going to be changing their ticker. What I want to know is about the new company. Have they done anything here? Lease is something brewing. Random one-day pump. Uh, ready to rumble. Alerted this morning. Why? Multi-penny run. I don't see any reasons here except that she's had a reverse merger, which is something. But she's running today. There, there may have been technicals. I really don't see any catalyst here. So let's just take a look at lease and see what that stock was looking like. Since there is no catalyst, uh, she hit a low bubble. Let's go back uh, four hour, six month. Yeah, look at that, folks. It was a 52-week low bubble. She has been very low. She's been riding low for a while here. I would have expected her to come back up to this point right here with this drop. Sooner or later, you would hope sooner than later, but it's been a while. However, she has just now started to do something. After hitting this low bubble in the aftermarket hours, she started to bounce. But it wasn't it wasn't initially from you know the start of the day. She didn't bounce until late in the afternoon. Let's see what we got there. Yeah. So she didn't start to move until what time is that? Really? 3:30 in the afternoon. So it really had nothing to do with the low bubble. Something has occurred. Something brought interest in. That's when the volume came in. Volume has been increasing all through the back part of the day. When is that last trade? Uh, that's right up to the end of the day right there. Our MACD is pushing up hard. Our RSI is in the fire. CCI is high above the top line. This looks like it wants to continue running, folks. This looks like a morning Momo play. I'd keep my eye on lease. This could give some more tomorrow up to the first half hour. Get out before 10 o'clock. When you're looking at a Momo play, something that was running, and the only reason it stopped running was because the bell went off. So we expect the shares that are in the queue 
for that excitement are going to be sitting there tomorrow morning and as soon as the bell rings at the price increase that they were going those shares will start being sold and the price will go up but it'll go up quick and it'll stop and probably come back down so i like to get out before 10 10 in the morning that's when the market dips or if it really starts to rip like 50 60 80 90 percent think about getting out while it's rising i mean it while it is going up think about getting out putting in your sell order by the time you get the sell order in you're probably up even a little bit higher the reason if you look for that ceiling and find it and it starts to come down as you're putting in your order it's going to start falling probably faster than it was climbing and by the time you get your order in you're down here and you've lost a lot of gains yeah you may leave some money on the table but you are putting money in your pocket guaranteed on an uphill rise you're taking your gains before it's taking them away i know that's hard to do but that's what discipline does so let me tell you what you won't go broke doing it i guarantee it all right let's see what that next stock is we were at 43 trades for that one 18 tnmd oh, only a hundred thousand shares 24 and 20 but no millions here okay here we have a 31 million shares 15 trades this is zag zag is a triple zero way under <laughs> it's way way down there we're not going to take a look at zag um, another triple zero triple zero three gteh was catching a lot of attention today 42 trades 69 million shares another triple three ftxp it's nice to see these triple zeros actually getting some attention i've got to tell you for about three four weeks there there was no attention being given to the trip zips so right now they are getting attention this one had 45 trades and 34 million shares so there was a lot of activity and maybe that higher share volume count is because people are looking at the triple zero stocks right now Ooh, we got a 54 uh oh it's not a triple so we can look at this one oh rat 67 000 shares is that cgsi let's take a quick poke in on cgsi just see what we got here cgs international finished today at 11 cents 36 percent gains 36 percent are we down that low already wow pink tier transfer agent no verified profile shell risk that means they're in business but they're not producing any revenues at least not that they're reporting all right relative volume went down look at that from 365,000 down to 67,000 and it still had gains to talk about little interesting is that because it has a low float well yeah it is a low float actually they've got a 23 million in their float not bad at all and the outstanding is just 28 i do like that that probably helped it move today financials we got anything nobody's making any money not on the otc market okay and is there any catalyst which is really what we want to know right uh not that we see there and disclosures anything new no all right i'm gonna take this drop it over here at twitter see if we can learn anything you never know what you might find there's hundreds and thousands of eyeballs looking at stocks over here oh it seems i talked about this stock a little while ago that's my post anything fresher holy cow um no it, now you think i'd remember everything i talked about but you know i look at a lot of stocks so no i don't so i don't see any catalyst here this should take off tomorrow that's april 4th april 4th so there's nothing new this is moving for unknown reasons that happens a lot i'm going to get rid of a lot of these windows i opened up a ton here already let's jump back over there let's see are we really down to uh we are 36 percent now remember this is every stock on the otc market this is the biggest gainers there is we've seen every stock that had bigger gains than 36 percent on the otc market they're right there and that's all there is folks so there isn't a lot of gains we are getting more trades we are getting more shares but boy the gains just aren't kicking in yet that was 54 let's go down oh i hate to go on to 30 percent but let's see what people were looking at you may find something that's going to run tomorrow this is nine and a half million with 98 trades 33 percent gains cnna how much you want to bet this is a cannabis company just a wild guess can america 
Can America operates as a holding company for the sake of developing assets within the legal cannabis and hemp industries. Geez, how do they know that? Psychic, right? So they finished a day at double zero three two, thirty three percent gains. Too bad that wasn't a three. We'd have a full house. Pink current, verified profile, and a transfer agent. Yay! All right for that. Volume today increased. Good, good. We went from two point one million to nine point five million. Her float set up, $255 million in the float. Not a real small float at all. Are they making money? No. Really? No. They've got no money coming in. We, we don't see a shell. And we do see zeros, which means they're filing. They're filing on time. They're just reporting nothing. Any new disclosures? Uh, that was from last month and that was from a week ago. Sex staff and that was then. I'm not sure what sex staff is. Well, it ain't coming up, so we're not going to worry about it. So news. Catalyst, please. No news since March, at least not there. And nothing there. See, this is ghosting as far as I'm concerned. Stocks that are running based on invisible catalysts. Let's see what we got here. CNNA shell risk has been removed. See, I didn't see it there, so how could I know? <laughs> shell risk has been removed by the OTC through arbitrary and shouldn't have been compared to others like fake ventilator sales companies exploiting pandemics. Should send a clear message we're getting strong. Oh, this is actually from the company itself. Oh, okay, right from the horse's mouth. I do like to get those sort of tweets. Should send a clear message we're getting stronger despite lies of paid haters saying he's going down. Cool story. All right, uh, what was their most recent news past that? A tweet. So they don't talk to their shareholders very often, do they? I don't see anything here. Let's back this up. Uh, May 11th. May 11th. April 29th. Yeah, so they, uh, he responded to somebody, but they didn't even put it here as their own tweet. So they don't talk to their company very often, but there you go. Now we know what the catalyst was. The shell risk has been removed, which means they should have some information somewhere to prove they're making money. Like, not a zero? Maybe? <laughs> How about putting something there that's not a zero? Ooh, 151. Ah, uh, this is HPIL. I did look at this one today. They did 77 million shares, 33% gains. It is a triple zero. HPIL was a very hot company a while ago. This is Stephen Brown's company. He saved this company. He did a reverse merger, got a hold of it. Company had a lot of dirty laundry. He's been cleaning it up. He said months ago he had it all cleaned up and it would be current. Right now it's limited information. Well, it didn't go current. And then he promised it again and again and again. And it never went current. Then he found more dirty laundry and said, this is why it wasn't going current. But we've got it fixed now. Well, we still aren't fixed. Now, this is a company that has uh, some online gaming, something to do with Metaverse, but the big deal I was interested in was the Apogee. The Apogee was a electronic uh, device that could charge a car while it was running, so it could virtually never ever have to stop. I mean, it was perpetual energy. Well, they did have something happen today, and I might as well share it with you since we're talking about it. And I can't understand why the company went up today because of it. Let's see what her share volume was. 64 million jumped to 77 million. Uh, share structure I don't think is too great. No, <laughs> God almighty. 15, 16 billion in the float. Come on, Stephen, fix that. Uh, let's see, it was the disclosures I needed to show you. Right here, they had an 8K. Is that the 8K? No, the supplemental information right there. This came out just a few days ago, which is why I don't think this has anything to do with it. But it tells us here that the chief executive officer and chairman of the board, Stephen Brown, uh, presented a letter of termination to Mr. Lord Farrow Tunishan due to Mr. Tunishan's failure to adhere to his employment agreement with HPIL. That's the inventor of the Apogee device. He's the guy who invented it. He came on the team and they were going to make an Apogee car with this device in it. Well, he just fired that guy. 
But that's not all. It goes on to say that further, the employment of Mr. Michael Torre has been terminated the same day due to Mr. Torre's failure to adhere to his employment agreement. Both Mr. Tuition and Mr. Torre have acted in manners against the company and against the interest of the company's shareholders. Folks, there was a war over there. The CEO just fired everybody that was important. So I'm not quite sure what's going on over there. Sounds like somebody's having a tantrum. Honestly, I'm just saying that because those are the top dogs outside of Steven and the company. So who's there now? There's one man at the boat. Who's going to take care of anything else? So it says here, um, let's see, on May 17th of this year, the British Columbia Securities Commission filed a cease trade order against HPIL Holdings under this section, blah, 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 with regard to the company's failure to file annual audited statements ending December 31st, 2021. I thought he did file that. On June 3rd, 2022, the company was advised by the OTC that the yield sign in the OTC market site will not be removed and that the OTC will not continue its review of the company's filings until the cease trade issued by the British Columbia Securities Commission was removed. Did you see any good news in there at all? Any at all? He's gotten rid of all the head honchos. They've had a cease trade order come in and they're not going to have their yield sign taken away. And the price went up. This is what I'm talking about, folks. How can you guess markets like this? 151 trades, 33% up, 77 million shares. I don't understand it. 69 trades, 2.9 million, 32% peek in at MRES. Hopefully this has something <laughs> better to tell us. Institute of Biomedical Research. Uh, Institute of Biomedical Research is a Nevada corporation with offices in Montegro and Pacific Northwest. Biomedical ambitious business venture whose activities extend from highly diversified scientific research to outsourcing the development of products and services. All right, so there's some sort of drug biotech, I guess. Finished the day at double zero. No, my bad. Single zero one zero five. 32% gains. Pink tier. Current verified profile transfer agent. Another shell risk. Now, this one actually says, says shell risk. Let's see what the volume was around this. Well, that was way up. 188,000 to 2.9 million. I know that's not a ton, but from 188,000, that's a big jump. Uh, share structure. No. Got a half a billion shares in the float. Not great at all. This company got any money? No. Most of your biomedical research companies don't. They spend money. They don't make money yet. Disclosures? We got anything here that's going to help us? No. 2013. And they are current, so there's nothing going on there. So, news. Fingers crossed, folks. 7 2021. Jeez, oh, Pete. So, this is what happens. There are many stocks that run for reasons we can't see. All you know is that they're running. And if you catch these stocks early enough, you can be a part of these ghost runs. And that's really all it's about. Now, I know people who trade just based on technicals. That is to say, all they do is look at the chart. They don't look at the news. They don't, I mean, you know, they, they will consider things like maybe a earnings report coming out but for the most part they just read the chart the chart tells you when to get in and when to get out regardless of what's going on it doesn't matter if there are gains there well if the chart was showing gains are coming you could have gotten in even if the company said they're going bankrupt tomorrow if it's running today that's all that matters because you're not in it forever you're just in it to take a gain and then get out and go find another one that's setting up to give money away take that gain and get out you don't have to take everything it's going to give matter of fact it's better if you try not to honestly all right let's see we're down to 32 percent gains 69 trades we got 43 here, 32,000. Boy, that's not a lot of shares, but the price is higher. You're going to see less volume on shares that are more expensive. We'll take a peek at this. Never know what you might find. WBSI company, what do they do? 
Web Safety has patents on two apps. The first app is called Web Safety. It allows parents to monitor questionable and potentially harmful content. Right. And uh, what's the second app? The second app is called Drive Safety. Drive Safety disables a mobile device from texting or doing anything else while the car is moving. So that's what they got. Their volume today, 20,000 jumped to 32,000. Their float, okay, that's not bad. You got just over 11 million. Any money coming in from that app yet? Nothing to talk about and nothing recent. Any disclosures for today? Five, six, and no, nothing. Any news? This is the last place to look for catalysts outside of good old Twitter, which is where we're probably going to have to go again. Oh, my goodness. So none of these companies are really showing a whole lot of activity. I mean, news-wise, there's nothing going on. All right, that one's been thrown in there. Web Safety announces that's January 14th, 2020. All right, I'm going to come up here to the latest. If anything was posted, it should pop up now. June 5th was the most current tweet. That's it. So there are no tweets, no news, no disclosures. Let's take a look at the chart because there must have been a technical for, who is this? WSI. Web safety. Woo, look at that. Wow. Wow. That's been climbing for five days straight. Uh, Was there anything we saw over there that happened in the last five days? Uh, That news is quite old. Disclosures, anything in the last five days? No, nothing in the last five days. So why is it running? Why is it running? And look at that. Finished the day at a high. Is that actually at the end of the day? I got some space there. Sure is. That is the end of the day. Let me take a look four hours six months back wow so she has just really been going sideways with some big bounces i mean seriously you could catch it here sell it there catch it here sell it there and what is that bounce we are at 36 cents to 96 cents whoa that's what a low float does for you folks holy cow those are the average ones the ones that are all the same size are uh 60 cent jumps from 36 cents to 96 cents over and over and over again and then you got these huge deep ones oh my god that fell down to seven cents and it came back up to 96 cents you do realize that's like 1200 percent gains oh my god Holy cow, that is great. So she was going sideways, just giving money away every other day. Then she just started doing this real loop-de-loop thing here. Again, though, she is hitting lows and then bouncing high. Hitting lows and bouncing. She has a pattern here that can almost be counted on. This, this is unique. This is not what she does, folks, is it? She doesn't climb. She bounces. So this is something unique, and she's doing this very well, too. But you can see the volume. In her style of change now, she's not doing these low bounces. She's got a new sort of trend going here. She is re-pulling all that volume together and climbing strong. Everything looks strong in the four hour. Let's just take a peek at that 20 hour. Technicals are ripping. I mean, they are screaming right now, folks. Let's come down to that five day, five minute. Everything is just screaming. Everything is still going. This train did not stop. Just because it went into the tunnel and you can't see it, trust me, it's going to come out the other end barreling. This day ended on a high note. I want to come down to the one minute. I want to see where at the very last minute of the end of the day, it had its biggest bounce, hit a high bubble, and it stopped. These people were excited. They were investing into this. You can see the volume was bouncing a lot. It was getting stronger and stronger. Not as strong at the end of the day, but that is a big bounce, relatively speaking. I think this is going to jump tomorrow morning. Just the way the charts look, and that's what we're talking about. All we're doing is looking at technicals. Now, why it ran today? Well, you had a low bubble here, but in a big jump. Let me tell you what, maybe people know the pattern of this. You know, just looking at the chart, you can see she has a pattern. So there was a low bubble, and boom, she jumped from, what's that, $1? Yeah, that's $1, she jumped to $1.20. Not a major jump, but that's one minute, folks. That's one minute, she went 20 cents. That that was uh, 
20% jump in one minute. Outstanding. And if we looked at that on the five minute, there you go. On the five minutes, she gave up from the $1 up to, it didn't move. No, five minutes, it stayed right there, fell down, and never got back to that yesterday. And today, she decided to double up <laughs> and just took off. So I like this one. I may be looking at this one tomorrow. WBSI. Looking good for a Momo play tomorrow morning, folks. All right, we are now down to, where were we? Uh, 29%. I got to tell you, I rarely, if ever, look under 30%. Unless you're looking for something that is just getting its engine warmed up. It's just starting to rev like this, right? 327 trades. Definitely a big crowd of people. Couple hundred, I'm going to figure. 2.3 million shares, 27% gains, and 27 cents. Well, that just looks righteous. We're going to have to take a look at this one. On the QB, a middle tier stock. So we know our financials are audited. This is UX Corp. UX Corp is a Canadian uranium cobalt exploration development company. So they're into mining, I guess. Some sort of mining exploration. They finished today at 28 cents with 27% uh, gains. Got all their ticks over here. Not a penny stock anymore. That means they've got a few million dollars in the bank and they've had it in the bank for a few years. Hasn't moved. And they've kept up with all their filings for a few years. Never had any problems. So they're not treated like a penny stock anymore. They're not a startup company. They all grow up and responsible. So even though they're 27 cents and on the OTC market, it is legally not a penny stock. So what is the relative volume? Jumped good, 188,000 to 2.3 million. Let's hope for a small float. Well, we don't know what it is. Outstanding is 544 million, about a half a billion. Uh, I'll go see if I can find it. They tell us here that it is about 427 million, but I normally don't trust that line it's normally outdated all the time i don't know why because i really trust this site but this is the one thing i don't uh take for granted all right financials anything here well they got something everybody else has had nothing so they got sixteen thousand dollars put those three zeros behind there and the last quarter they only had two thousand dollars didn't cost them anything to make they got to keep that money how do you do that in mining? Disclosures, anything today? 520 and 920, nothing today. News, I gotta tell you, the, uh, the news for the OTC market, it is utterly cluttered with mining companies. For every piece of news on the metaverse or uh, a new drug, there have got to be 10 pieces of news for mining companies. It is just overwhelming right now. But they did. They had news today. Uranium Energy Corps announces acquisition of UEX Corporation to create the largest diversified North American focused uranium company. Well, here we go again, folks. This is another takeover. See, Uranium Energy is buying UEX. This is UEX. So we've got another company here that's actually buying this company out. That's two of these we've seen today. And what sort of gains she get? 27% gains. Not as much as you would think, right? Uranium Energy Corps announces acquisition of UEX to create the largest diversified North American focused uranium company. And in case you didn't know it, folks, uranium is where everything is pointed right now. We need electricity for everything, and now it looks like cars too. And that is going to be a huge draw. The electric companies aren't going to be able to make that much electricity without more nuclear plants. And we've gotten this down to a science now. It's safe supposedly right so they want to build something like 120 more of these uranium nuclear plants so this could be very good business i actually did a video a while ago on a uranium mine company that has the potential to do some strong business so is there anything else they can tell us here yeah there's a lot of information i don't want to read it all though let's see what i can see here um Accredited transaction, doubling of UEC's uranium resources in world-class, politically stable uranium mining jurisdictions. Only 13.7% dilution to UEC's outstanding shares. Uh, recent global events have set in motion long-term structural changes in the supply chains of energy. 
UX portfolio is comprised of 29 uranium projects covering key areas of the producing eastern side of the developing western side <laughs> of the prolific Athabasca Basin. That's right. Athabasca Basin is the same area that the company I covered is working in. It is super rich. UEC maintains its strong balance sheet with over $180 million of cash and liquid assets with no debt. This actually sounds good, folks. I would look into this company as well. I'm not into mining companies, and I'll tell you why I'm not into them. Primarily because there's just too many of them, and I don't know what to look for. I'm looking for companies that are actually mining, that are actually pulling stuff out of the ground, not exploration, not we're looking, we believe we have, uh, we're, we're pretty hopeful. No, no, I want people that are actually doing it. But a takeover that's a whole different thing. You've got a bigger company, it looks like, has just swallowed up another company. I think this should do more. So do some DD on that company. Uh, who was that, by the way? Was that WBSI? No. That was uh, UEXCF, which was just acquired by Uranium Energy Core. Well, I think that's pretty much taken us down as far as I really like to go. All right, we will go down to 22%. That's it. I'm not going past 20%. This one had 6.5 million shares. Uh, it had 147 trades. So you got to figure there's at least 100 people there, right? This is SEII. Finished today at 0 0.023. All right, what do we got here? This is Sharing Economy International. Okay, 0 0.024 finished with 22% gains, middle tier, financials are audited. Got those precious green ticks over there. Let's see what this company does with a name like that. Uh, transforms its business into a global sharing economy. The company owns two sharing platforms, eCrent, a peer-to-peer -peer sharing rental online marketplace worldwide, and Budigo, a peer-to-peer -peer delivery service. Okay, they actually don't sound like they're in America. They're not. There we go. It's a Chinese company, Hong Kong. These names just didn't sound like any cities I would hear in America. So this is a Chinese company. And let's see what their relative volume was. Well, it went up 1.4 million to 5.6 million. Their float, ah, another one I'm going to have to look up. All right. You know, if I, I will look these up. If I find it, it'll be up there. If I can't find one, it'll say float, question mark, question mark, question mark. It just means I couldn't find it. $287 million in the outstanding. Are these people making any money? Hey, we've actually got more than one digit. Did $237,000 at the end of last year. Only spent $54,000 to keep $183,000. Not bad. Quarterly reports, anything recent? Yeah, their last quarter they did $57,000. Ain't kicking butt, but it's a heck of a lot more than most of these companies been doing. Disclosures. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is a week old. Week old. I love these, though, because they normally have something important on it. On June 8th, Sharing Economy International and QEV Technologies. QEV, is that the TV selling channel? whereby the two companies entered into the plan to jointly develop a joint venture company for the commercialization and distribution of whole range of environmental electric and hydrogen vehicles, which will target to the markets in Europe, North America, and South America. Okay, well, here's another big piece of news, folks. I mean, I didn't see anything actually in the news about this. This is June 8th. This is five days ago. This company along with QEV have gotten together. They are doing a joint venture to make electric and hydrogen vehicles. They're going to sell in Europe, North America, and South America. Holy cow, did we see any news like that over here? I mean, isn't that newsworthy? Wouldn't you put out a piece of news? All right, they did. I was looking for current news. So they do have it here. Sharing Economy International, $30 million to be raised for investing in Naked Eye. Naked Eye 3D technology. So they're into more than just electric and hydrogen vehicles, as you can see here. Naked Eye. You're going to have to do some DD there, but we've got some more information. They've just made a deal with QEV. Uh, they've obviously raised $30 million here to invest in 
uh, Naked Eye 3D Technology. That sounds real interesting. All right, I got to look, folks. I'm sorry. I just had to look. Let's see what it says. Uh, recently, the company announced it would receive a strategic investment of approximately $30 million from Hang King Fund, a leading fund company in the industry, which will be used to focus on the metaverse ecology that SEII is actively promoting, especially for the building of the underlying architecture of Naked Eye 3D related technology and the business expansion of the metaverse technology. All right, so there's more information here, but now we know that too. The company is into the metaverse with this 3D technology. They're also into electric and hydrogen cars now. It is a Chinese company and uh, the China nation itself has been releasing hold of technology companies so this one may not be in any trouble you may be safe to actually look at it and that's a lot of decent news for it all right i think i'm going to end right there folks you can see how valuable this page is we just went through 12,275 stocks we looked at every stock here the ones that weren't important aren't here so we saw all the important ones how many trades how many shares right here and we went all the way from the very top of 9,000 percent gains down to 20 percent gains and covered all 12,000 plus companies this is how i like to keep abreast even coming over here just in the morning to see what's starting to run you're going to see small numbers maybe an eight if everything else is a one two a one 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 and you see an eight jump into it look at that now in saying that I want to let you know that this has a time delay of 15 minutes so when you come here first thing in the morning you're not gonna probably see anything until probably 10 to 10 and by that time things are already running so you're gonna see something like this a bunch of ones and then maybe a five maybe a five well a five is five times as much as everybody else it's already starting now we don't know that may be all she does for the whole bloody day but you want in early this is how you do it find the companies that have the biggest numbers early in the day jump into it see what its catalyst is go look at the chart may not have a catalyst may just have a technical and if you can't find anything go over to twitter maybe somebody found something nobody else knows and then you're in on it early don't get greedy remember you're there to take some of the money not to take it all it's that trying to take it all that gets your hand burned over and over again thanks for showing up folks i hope i shared something with you that well something you didn't know something that helped you and look at those stocks we found today we found some really good stocks that had strong news don't waste it remember the more you know the more you're gonna grow see you folks <music>